um, uh, so we have been seeing what events is and event stream processing is. Now let's see what complex events mean. Uh, a complex event as such doesn't happen on its own. A pattern of events over a time period could result in a complex event. It's an event that summarizes uh, a set of other events. In other words, it's born out of a pattern that is applied on a set of other events. Based on the type of the event that happens, it could lead to a opportunity or threat. In the patient example that we saw some time before, any complex event that is detected could be indicating a threat, whereas uh, let's take another example in algorithmic trading, wherein uh, you trade depending on some uh, uh, market watch data, you would employ you know, complex events to see if there is an opportunity to you know, uh, continue your buying or selling. Um, Moving on to complex event processing, uh, it's pretty much similar to what we saw in event stream processing, uh, ESV as in event stream processing. Uh, think of it as a subset of, and uh, I think of uh, CEP as a subset of ESP. Uh, so steps would be the same uh, or similar at least. So you would analyze the stream of events or uh, multiple stream of uh, multiple streams of events in real time. Um, and then uh, you would want to recognize particular sequences or patterns across these streams. And then uh, you would want to, you know, from these patterns infer a business significant event from the correlated events. Uh, the following figure shows a typical CEP architecture uh, or uh, uh, CEP application. Uh, on your left side, uh, we have the event sources that are responsible for sending the events. The sources could be pushing the events like tickers. So ticker could be literally pushing the events, whereas from databases you would be rather pulling the events. Um, so, uh, and once you know the event reaches here to this stage, the pre-processing stage, what happens is uh, the pre uh, some amount of pre-processing is applied before it is handed over to the next level of pattern matching, uh, uh, you know, part of the CP engine. Uh, so this pre-processing could be, you know, I mean, so every event source might have its own event format, and you cannot apply a pattern over, you know, discrete sets of, uh, you know, uh, event types. So this pre-processing would be required to uh, kind of, you know, connect to this particular um, uh, event source and then convert the event source type from, uh, you know, from, from the event source type to a, a, a CEP engine or CEP engine specific format. Um, so that you can apply some temporal characteristics, uh, you know, as part of your querying. Uh, the format may be, uh, so the CEP format may be as simple as, uh, you know, a date timestamp uh, and an event source indicate from where the event is arise, uh, sorry, and a payload which is the actual, you know, uh, the event that has appeared or occurred from this particular event source. Once the pre-processing is done, the events are then washed over these queries. Uh, and then uh, the filter events reaches the post-processing side. So these patterns or you know these queries are actually um, preset, um, uh, preset in the CEP application or in the CEP engine, so that you know I mean uh, as as the events are washed over, you know the uh, the matching pattern uh, is uh, you know then um, uh, forwarded to post-processing. The post-processing would be uh, kind of a reverse of, you know, the pre-processing as such. Um, um, in post-processing, you know, the CP specific uh, data type would be converted to even target specific data type, and then, uh, you know, uh, there would be a connection happening. You know, it could be again a pull or a push, which means that you know uh, the application could actually expose the uh, filtered data sets, uh, filtered events as, you know, uh, for pulling or pushing. Uh, and uh, again, uh, that you know, I mean, the, the target applications that you know would want to get notified uh, can either pull the events or you know get them pushed. Uh, let's see, you know, how this pull and push works in you know in the subsequent slides. And uh, let's go back to our patient example. Uh, that was a simple example with only uh, a BD mon uh, sorry, uh, ECG monitor fix. Now let's hook up, you know, some more sensors. Um, assuming that a patient is critical enough, uh, let's say you know we'll connect a BP monitor and even a pulse checker, uh, and each of these sensors would start uh, its own event stream. So a BP monitor will keep 
continuously reporting the blood pressure. Uh, uh, the pulse checker will continuously report the pulse and the ECG will continuously report the heartbeat. Now a physician uh, or a doctor can configure this system on a patient by patient, patient basis so that uh, you know he or the nurse can be alerted if certain combination of these measurements are detected within a certain time period. Let's say the pulse goes below you know, a threshold and then you know the BP increases or decreases or the heart rate decreases then you know you could set up a combination and as these events happen, there is a central monitor that keeps, you know, observing this data uh, within a certain time interval. And if the pattern is matched, then it raises an alarm. Right. So uh, this is a classic, or a, a probably a very simple or a naive example of, you know, um, a complex event processing system. Um, uh, so the C, the complex event which arises thus from the combination of all these three events is actually a threat to the patient but you know provides an opportunity to the doctor to save the patient's life right all right uh, so let's take a look at some of the CEP products in the market um, uh, uh, note that uh, you know they are not given in any particular order nor does their presence here indicate their popularity it's just that you know I mean I have come across these uh, uh, CPs are our CP products at some instance and I've just decided to put them across uh, and all these excerpts that you see below each of these product is an excerpt from uh, their own websites and I haven't done anything specifically there uh, but uh, uh, so the first one listed there is streams insight I think uh, for obvious reasons the webinar session is around that and uh, so we shall be seeing that in a little more detail in the upcoming slides uh, Streambase uh, is another uh, CP popular CP product from Sybase, and it has been around for quite a long time. Uh, now that Sybase has been acquired by SAP, you know, um, it's now owned by SAP, I guess. Uh, Oracle's event uh, uh, OEP or Oracle's Complex Event Processing is another uh, CP product. Uh, it's developed as a Java app server. Uh, Esper is another interesting product. Uh, it's open source based on Java. And as the tradition goes, there is a dotnet equivalent of Esper, um, rightly prefixed with N, and it's called Nesper. Uh, Tipco is, a mar is in the market too with uh, its own uh, CEP um, called Business Events. Uh, there are a few more, but uh, let's stop this now. I wanted to list these uh, to show that you know something is common, and so you can see uh, that you know the powerful and high throughput. And here it's high performance, and then real time streaming, and the Oracle. If you see, you know, to filter, correlate, and process. And here in Nesper, if you see again, filter, analyze events in various ways, real time. Uh, and then here it says opportunities and remediate threats. And sorry for you know, that kind of bad highlighting, but yeah, that's. So anyway, uh, so uh, this, you know, I mean, uh, is a a classic summary of what you know a CP is for. Um, as we move on, you know, you'll find that you know uh, uh, CP products are for high volume, low latency, uh, real time or near real time streaming. Uh, uh, you know, I mean, uh, uh, near real time stream processing uh, with some you know pattern matching and uh, you know uh, which really you know uh, results in you know opportunities or threats.